OCI Orange County Inspections is glad to present the following. The Quality Control and Quality Assurance Professional Seminar. Segment number 14. With this segment, we will review the provisions for seismic requirements used for a structure designed to resist earthquake-induced forces. The first topic will be the limitation we will see that these principles and systems were the outcome of research on the 1994 Northridge earthquake performed by FEMA and the SAC program. The second topic is the connection with the following items being reviewed. The cost strain within a connection, the need for special design and detailing plus suitable material condition, professional workmanship, also why observation and testing are necessary. And the third topic is the task assignment, which will reveal the progression sequence which is intended to make certain that the material, procedure, and testing for the welded connection are performed in the correct manner that will comply with the structure design to stand firm the notable reincursing strains of an earthquake. The first topic is limitation, and this part will apply to the design, fabrication, quality control, and quality assurance of the welded connection within a statically loaded structure. We first look at the responsibility, in which we find a detailed list that is part of the contract documents and that must be approved by the engineer. The following are the items that will be required for compliance. The welded connection arrangement, the identification of the SLRS seismic load resisting system members, the protected zone locations, identified demand critical welds, the procedure for removal of backup bars and weld tabs, which should include details on any added filler welds the dimension of the access weld holes, also known as rat holes, and lastly the QAP, Quality Assurance Plan, which is required to be approved by the engineer of record. Next is the contractor's responsibility, which covers the documentation availability at any time during production, plus retention up to one year after completion of the project, the electrode, flux and any shielding gas certification that complies with AWS A5 requirements, an approved test or manufacturer certification for the filler metal heat input envelope, the filler metal product data sheets that include hydrogen content and exposed capabilities, the approved WPS's, and lastly, the supplemental welder test results. Now we highlight the publications that are part of the references used. The AWS standards and specifications, the AISC, American Institute of Steel Construction Standards, the ASNT, American Society for Non-Destructive Testing Standards, and even the CSA, Canada Standard Association's certification requirements. And lastly are the definitions that are specified within these seismic principles. First is the abbreviation SLRS, which stands for Seismic Load Resisting System, which covers the structural elements indicated by the engineer that are assembled in a building that resist seismic loads. Next is the meaning of demand critical welds, which is a welded connection constructed in a way that reduces the likelihood of fracture. Third definition is the protected zone, which is a specified area of the member that will dissipate the energy produced by an earthquake. Fourth is the QAP, or Quality Assurance Plan, which is a written description of qualifications, procedures, 
quality observations, resources, and records for assuring the structure complies with the approved codes and specifications. And the last definition is the K area, which covers the region of the beam web and flange tangent point. We move into the second topic of the segment, which covers the connection. And the first item deals with the continuity plates and stiffeners found within a beam or column member, and they have four rules that need to be followed, and they are. The corner must be clipped a minimum of one and a half inches beyond the K area when along the web. Next, that dimension changes to a half inch when along the flange. The third rule is proper termination of the weld at the corner for both the web and flange. And lastly, is a minimum radius of a half inch for the curve of a clip corner if required. Next item is the qualification that covers the required supplemental welder test. This qualification is in addition to the requirements of AWS D1.1 Clause 4 due to the fact that it will confirm the welder meets the following requirements. Can produce wells designed for demand critical. Proper fusion between bottom beam flanges to column flange and welder can fabricate a sound weld using an access hole or also known as rat hole. Once qualified it will remain valid for three years. The qualification establishes additional information which covers the backing material, the maximum root opening when backing is not used, and lastly the maximum filler metal deposit rate. The third item is the WPS, which we have learned within this seminar. It shall specify all applicable essential variables used for the welding procedure, but because of the demand critical welds used, the following must also be listed. The manufacturer and trade name for the electrode, and the qualifi qualifying ranges for the produce heat inputs. The welding process that are approved are shield of metal, gas metal, and flux core arc welding, and submerged arc welding. And a quick tip is the air velocity limits, which are a maximum three miles per hour for gas shielding welding processes, and for non-shielding welding processes, the maximum velocity is determined by the acceptance of the visual criteria. fifth item are the filler metals, which must provide the minimum properties for the following. The CVN toughness test, the H16 level for diffusible hydrogen, a manufacturer's certification of conformance, and the packaging condition and exposure time limits. We see the sixth item, which is the maximum inner pass temperature that shall not exceed 550 degrees and must be confirmed 1 to 3 inches from the weld joint. And last item of this topic is the access, which cover items like tack welds that are not allowed except when used inside the weld joint for connecting the back of bar. Next is the removal of the back of bar, which is removed by air carbon arc cutting plasma arc gouging, grinding, chipping, or thermal cutting processes. Another quick tip is the minimum filler weld size which is 5 16th of an inch when required after the back of bar has been removed and the weld access shall have a radius not less than 3 8 of an inch. Other items are the weld tabs and dams, which are required to be removed without damage to the weld joint, weld closing with a system for identifying each welder, which is done by assigning the welder a personal symbol or mark that is placed by their completed work. 
The final topic of this segment, segment is the task assignment. The engineer of record will prepare the QAP quality assurance plan which will identify the quality control and quality assurance tasks that shall be performed before, during, and after the project. First item is the required personal qualification for the QAP. First is the basic fundamentals of construction and workmanship for steel materials, plus a working knowledge for the fabrication, erection, and testing of the different steel categories. Also, a understanding of the codes, specifications, and drawings, being professional with both record keeping and personnel. Next, the following are required. For the welding inspector, a AWS CWI certification, and for the NDT technician, a ASNT certification. With these requirements in place for the QC and QA personnel, it allows the second item to be reviewed, which is the written practice, and the following must be satisfied. Proper qualification and certification of the QC and QA personnel, procedures for selecting and administrating the QC and QA personnel must be adhered to, procedures for the agency observation are complied with, and lastly the applicable codes, standards, and specifications are in accordance with the authority having jurisdiction. And the last item is the NDT requirements for the weld connection. When mag particle testing is required in the K area, there is a 48 hour hold after welding is finished. The base metal should be checked for lamination or laminar tearing after welding. Weld excess holes shall be NDT'd for cracks before welding. A repair to a weld access hole shall require mag particle or dye penetrant testing before the welding. Any location after repair requires mag particle testing. The yoke method shall be used for mag particle testing. And lastly, any ultrasonic testing shall be performed in accordance with Clause 6 of the AWS D1.1. We have come to the end of this segment and let's review the topics we have covered. First was the limitation and we saw the items that are related to the preparation, fit up, welding, and testing of the weld connection and remember it does not in any way design or engineer the structure or any portion of the members. Here we saw the meaning of SLRS seismic load resisting system which is intended to provide a welded steel building an ability to sustain the long and short term forces produced by an earthquake. Next we saw the responsibility of the engineer and contractor with items like the removal of the backup bars, WPS's, while understanding key definitions of the SLRS system like demand critical weld, protected zone, and the K area. Second item was the connection and here we took a look at the continuity and stiffer to plates that require special attention within the LSRS system as well as the welder who cannot strike an arc without successfully passing the supplemental welder test. The WPS was reviewed with the same format that we have come accustomed to, but a twist on the filler metal was looked at with the properties established from the CVN toughness test being the benchmark for the minimum strength allowed. And we finish this topic with the removal and surface preparation for backing bars, weld access holes, added fillet welds, weld tabs, and end dams. The last topic was a task assignment which is basically established with the QAP quality assurance plan in mind. 
which monitors the performance of the contractor with the material and workmanship that ensures compliance with the applicable codes, specifications, and drawings, plus the alert for special requirements with the NDT for critical areas within the weld connection, like the K area, laminar tearing, and weld access holes. The study material for this segment will once again bring some very fine documents on the issues of earthquake versus buildings. The first article is the ABCs of Seismic Building Codes. Second is a document from both IRIS and the University of Portland on the effects from earthquakes on Haiti. The third is a brief paper on earthquake shaking and building response written by a joint venture of ATC SEOC. And lastly is a PowerPoint slide overview about buildings in earthquakes. If any questions arise, just email at orangecountyinspections at yahoo.com. When completed, move to segment number 15.